We invite newcomers to be a part of this community and give them the support that they need to grow their careers and support their families. The reason we do this is simple. in session. Councilman Maniscalco, you have invocation? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's my uh, pleasure this morning to welcome Pastor Earl B. Mason, Sr. If you would like to come to the uh, lectern, uh, the gentleman is a native of Tampa and a product of Hillsborough County Schools, graduated from Middleton High School, attended USF, alumni of FAMU, holds a master's degree, attended Dallas Theological Seminary, received his doctorate in theology from a Cornerstone Theological Seminary. He has a real estate certificate, mortgage banker's license. If you saw this list, this man has been involved in so much, and we are grateful for his service in this community and all the boards that he has served on. 
and everything that he has done. So if we could please stand. Uh, Pastor, please lead us in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, Councilwoman. Uh, just if I might say the most recent time I was in these chambers, I was pleading for mercy and ended up having to pay a fine. So <laughs> I'm glad to be back on this occasion for this reason. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time of celebration. Thank you for these men and women who serve this community. And we thank you for their leadership. We ask thy blessings be upon uh, this time. We ask that you would grant them guidance, direction, wisdom, and we thank you for the celebrants today. We thank you for their service. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for their submission. We ask that you would bless this gathering today. May your name be hallowed, your kingdom realized, your will done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Roll call. Carlson? Here. Vera? Uh, here. Maniscalco? Here. Kurtek? Here. Goods? Here. Miranda? Here. Cedro? Here. We have physical form. Good morning to everybody. Thank you all for being here on this special day. Uh, and a prosperous and happy new year to everyone. Councilman Vieira, you're going to start the commendations off today. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have a, a number, and they're all for police and fire here today, and it's a great pleasure to be here today, sir. And we're going to begin with the police officer of the month, which will go to Detective Amy Jones with Tampa Police Department. Um, a very... A bit, apparently a very popular individual in Tampa Police Department, and that's wonderful. Um, Tampa City Council always gives these commendations to our first responders uh, because they reflect the values of our community and, and the values of us, et cetera, in lauding the hard work of our first responders, our police officers, and our firefighters. Uh, no matter what happens outside of this building, uh, these men and women are always there for us. So I will yield the floor to... Um, how are you? Uh, to Chief Burkhoff. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, Council. It's my honor to uh, be here and present Detective Amy Jones as our Officer of the Month. Amy and I go way back, so this is very deserving for her and, and for me. I'm actually very proud of you for this moment. But I'm going to give you just a quick uh, tidbit of all that she does in District 2. Detective Amy Jones is an incredibly productive member of the D2 District Detective Squad, or the DLIS Squad. As the case agent to over 246 cases last year, she has one of the highest clearance rates in the unit. And that speaks volumes not only for Amy, but for our department in general. When you compare us to other cities our size, the most recent report shows that we have t over twice the clearance rate of some of these other agencies, and that's because of detectives like Amy Jones. So her work not only helps solve crimes, but also improves the quality of life for our citizens. I'll give you a couple examples. So in November of 2022, Detective Jones and a colleague were working a case where a suspect used a brick to smash the front window of a local boutique and removed over 100 fake gold and silver necklaces before fleeing undetected. Detective Jones was able to obtain video surrounding that area which helped identify the suspect. On November 3rd, a tip came in from a caller who believed he had spotted the suspect in the area. Detective Jones immediately went out to the location provided and located the suspect wearing the same outfit as seen in the video. And this doesn't say this here, but Amy Jones is one of the detectives that is out in the field. And if there's anybody that's gonna catch something like that, that's Amy. She works from the field and not sitting at her desk. So eventually she um, sees that person, and it doesn't go from there. It's not just a quick apprehension. 
After a foot pursuit, the suspect was able to elude arrest, but Jamie, our Detective Jones did not stop there. Every day after, she searched her area, in her zone, in her neighborhood for the suspect. And about six days later, that she located that suspect. Knowing that he would try to flee again, she used good decision making by coordinating with additional units to the respond to the area. Um, as officers arrived, the suspect immediately tried to run, but this time ran right into Detective Jones. <laughs> On uh, November 21st, Detective Jones responded to another burglary in her zone. The suspect forced his way inside the motel room and stole more than $1,600 worth of items, including a phone, purse, clothing, and an electric bicycle. Detective Jones obtained surveillance video in that case, showed the suspect taking the bike to a separate room, leading her to believe that he was likely a motel regular. Two days later, she developed information that the suspect was walking around at a nearby gas station. She advised the patrol officers of this information, and as a result of this quick thinking, the officers were able to take the suspect into custody and locate the victim's cell phone on him. So as I was talking about before, Detective Jones has that hand-on approach. She's in the community investigating crimes, and she's very effective in solving, or in solving cases. She patrols her zone daily, and uh, this actually is part of our neighborhood policing effort. It's our enhancement that we're doing next year. Basically, everybody that works their zone or their neighborhood solves problems, engages with the community, and Detective Jones is a prime example of that. And for these reasons and many others that we'd be here all day talking about, she is our Officer of the Month for January 2023. Detective. I'll, um, I'll present this to you on behalf of Tampa City Council, um, and then we'll um, have some individuals from the community come and, and share their appreciation for you. Then you may speak if you'd like, and then we'll hear from uh, Tampa City Council. So on behalf of Tampa City Council, we are honored to give you this uh, Tampa City Council commendation for being Officer of the Month for all your hard work. We appreciate you 100%. Here you Thank go, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. And now we're going to have to... Good morning, Donna McBride with the Strath Center. Detective Jones, it's my pleasure to meet you and thank you for all your service to not just your neighborhood, but this city and keeping us safe. And thank you for such an outstanding job. Yes, the Strath Center would like for you to enjoy a, a show. Thank you. Oh. Brandon Barclay, Tampa PBA City Council. Uh, Detective Jones, obviously great job as always. We appreciate your service. You. PBA is presenting you with this plaque. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the playoff Buccaneers, I just want to I want to go ahead and, and give this young lady a, a ball, signifying how hard she works. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh -huh. Leo Gary um, with uh, Bill Curry Ford, and this is Grace Thomas. Uh, on behalf of Bill Curry Ford, we'd like to uh, present you with, um, for the weekend, we're going to give you a 2023 uh, vehicle for the weekend of your choice. You just let us know what, 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 uh, what day. We also um, put together a free oil change, tire rotation for your personal vehicle, and then um, also $500 off a new vehicle. Thank you. Right. Good morning, my name is Mary Bailey and I'm here on behalf of Zoo Tampa, a volunteer on the board there. And uh, congratulations thank and you. thank you for your service. Thank you. I really appreciate every, all the men and women who serve and keep us safe. Um, we're presenting you with an annual membership to the zoo. So you can go all year round and bring some family and friends, go to our special events as well. And uh, we hope you uh, love to protect animals as much as you like to protect our yes. citizens. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. My name is Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. We're here to present you with a gift card where you can enjoy at any of our restaurants, including all of the Columbia restaurant locations around Florida, Ulele, Casa Santo Stefano, Goody Goody. Um, please enjoy with your family between foot pursuits. Thank you so much for all that you do. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.
morning. Good morning. Good morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steps Towing Service, and Detective, congratulations on a job well done, Thank well you. deserved. On behalf of Todd Stepp and Steps Towing, I'd like to present you a night out in our company limousine and a, a $50 gift card to a restaurant of your choice. Take some time off, you deserve it. Thank, Thank you. you for everything you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Good morning, Council. Leah Van Name with Tampa Theater. Detective, uh, on behalf of Tampa Theater, I want to congratulate you and thank you for all your service in our community. And I'm honored to give you the gift of a membership to Tampa Theater. It includes a free admission to uh, movies, free popcorn, and a free tour of the theater. So thank we you. hope to see you at the theater. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. You got a big bag over there? The chief going to help you out? Yes, sir. Steve Michelini, I'm here on behalf of a variety of different uh, enterprises who would like to honor and recognize your contribution to the city. One is the uh, Tampa Metropolitan Mall YMCA. We'll provide you with a gift certificate so you can go enjoy yourself over there. On behalf of Bella Brava, which is in the Midtown section, we're providing you with a gift certificate so you can enjoy yourself for lunch or dinner. On behalf of Yummy House China Bistro, we're providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself over there. <laughs> On behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, we're providing you with a gift certificate, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And on behalf of Meat Market and the Old Hyde Park, we're providing you with another gift certificate, so you're going to have a lot to eat. <laughs> That's why you have to go to the line. <laughs> That's why I have to run. Okay, that would appear to be it. So, um, Detective, if you'd like to come and speak and address council and, and your friends. Thank you, thank you. Um, I would like to thank City Council and the businesses here today for this honor of Officer of the Month. Um, I'd also like to thank my District 2 Command staff and thank you for all your continued support. And to Squad 200 and all the patrol units of our district, even though I'm standing here today, this award would definitely not um, be happening without you guys and all the assistance and guidance of you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So now we're going to hear from the Thank you. Carl. Carl. Thank you for your hard work, ingenuity, perseverance in solving these crimes. Um, we need 200 more of you, um, fortunately, unfortunately. So if we can clone you, that would be great. Or um, please let us know what we need to do to support you so that we can uh, make sure we retain great people like you and, um, and also let us know what we can do to attract more. Um, if, you, if you need anything or have any ideas, please let us know. But thanks so much for all your service and hard work. Thank you, sir. Gus from Mascalco. Congratulations and thank you for, uh, for all that you do in keeping our community safer. I think you know, the chief made it very, very clear that you've been very, very instrumental in uh, keeping us safe, fighting crime, getting the bad guys. So we appreciate uh, the sacrifice that you make every time you put that uniform on and the sacrifice that your family makes. Thank you. Congratulations. Councilor um, Berta. I want to echo the thanks. Um, that's in a really amazing clearance rate, and you should be incredibly proud of that. So thank you so much for that. And I love um, hearing about the getting out in the community every day and knowing where everyone is and how to, how to find the people so that you can keep that clearance rate growing. Thank you for all your hard work and your dedication and your effort. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Councilman Goods. Man, you took everything I was going to say. Sorry. You know about a clearance rate? <laughs> well, I know about a clearance rate. That's like the chief said, that's, that's big when you can clear cases because not only, you know, it makes you feel that you did what you're supposed to do, but that citizen or that victim who was victimized, they're grateful for getting their properties back, solving a case that they were hurt or injured. So I was trying to say thank you for the job you've done. Uh, keep up the good work, especially the community efforts. Thank you, sir. Councilor How would you like to be a last on the letter? Huh? <laughs> Anyway, uh, officer, it's your day today, and your day's been every day because the work that you do is paramount to keep the citizens of Tampa safe. And uh, when you were going through your presentation, the chief was talking about all the accomplishments you've had in a short period of time. Remind me of that deal on TV, CSI. <laughs> and I guess you are CSI. Because I, I see how they find something that's the size of a hair and a monocue and they take it in and they look at it and they've got a little difference in the other one. They match it two months later, somebody else, and they catch a criminal. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for all the police officers, men and women of the great force that we have. 
and all those in the technology area that it, now they can catch things that are 20 years old and still prosecute you for, called DNA. But thanks again for what you do on a daily basis. Uh, your presence is not only seen, but it's heard without speaking. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if anybody wants to find out what these brave women and men in uniform go through, please go to the Tampa Citizens Police Academy. You're just going to scratch the surface, but you'll see what they go through each and every day. Detective Jones, yes, sir. this is your day. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything that you do. Thank you for being part of the family of the citizens of, of the city of Tampa. Thank you again. Thank you. And uh, next, Mr. Chairman, it's my great pleasure to do our uh, Tampa Firefighter of the Quarter, which will go to paramedic John Fonte. Um, we're uh, obviously honored again to do this because the city of Tampa supports our first responders. And do we have Chief Fritz? Oh, there you go. Who will come up and talk some about these firefighters? Chief, go ahead. Name. Good morning, Council. Barbara Tripp, Tampa Fire Rescue. You know, it is great pleasure to... Uh, be here to recognize this individual for the uh, efforts that he's done on a particular day, but day-to-day -day things that he do throughout our community to make sure our community is well protected and make sure they receive the best care there is to receive. So uh, today we nominated um, John Fonte, um, who's been employed with the Tampa Fire Rescue for about five years now. In that time, he's been promoted to the rank of paramedic and has made quick work in getting through his all the process to become what we call an acting lieutenant. Um, Paramedic Fonte is currently an acting lieutenant. He's been a very, very valuable asset to the community. He is currently assigned to Station 5. Along with Tampa Fire Rescue, Paramedic Fonte has shown several occasions that he has not only become a wealth of knowledge into our rescue protocol, but also has mastered his craft, you know, to also spread that knowledge to other firefighters as well. To further illustrate this point, let's refer to an event that took place on December 18th. During the incident, paramedic uh, Fonte was on another call. He heard a call come in, him and his partner, he was assigned to the unit stationed in West Tampa, which was Rescue 9. The call came in and says auto versus pedestrian. Without even thinking, paramedic Fonte dispatched on the radio and said, I am closer. He responded to something that he never thought he would, he, basically he didn't prepare himself for this incident that took place. So with that, he quickly responded to a call that was located on North Dare Mabry. There was nothing he could have done to prepare for this incident. But with quick thinking, he made some quick heroic actions. On the scene, they found a grandmother and a grandchild who were biked over by a car and pinned up underneath the vehicle. <coughs> With his quick thinking and his knowledge and his skills, he automatically called for additional response, which included a heavy rescue unit. With that heavy rescue unit, it's additional equipment to be able to assist with getting the patient, getting the vehicle off of the patient. Thanks to a bystander, they quickly used a jack to help lift the vehicle off of the two um, uh, individuals. With that being said, paramedic Fonte, without even thinking, was able to relieve the child, the three-year-old, bring the child from under the vehicle and immediately transport to the hospital. With that, him and his partner did all of the vitals, continued to assist the child with breathing, meaning they had to intubate the patient. So with success, he intubated the patient, took all the vitals, gave the patient all the um, ALS treatment that the patient need, and to this day, we can thank Paramedic Fonte for that child being alive. You know, unfortunately, the grandmother succumbed to her injuries, but that three-year-old child is living today because of paramedic Fonte. And with that, without further ado, we nominated him for firefighter quarter for Tampa Fire Rescue.
Good morning, Council. On behalf of uh, the Tampa Fire Rescue Awards Review Board, I'm Chief uh, Orrin Hanson. I'm the chairman of it. Um, and on behalf of that, I wanted to congratulate Premier McFonty for a job well done. Um, this is stuff that we do train for, and he took that and he did it uh, excellently that day. And so, like Chief said, because of his actions, the, uh, the child is still living today. So congratulations on that. Job well done. I uh, have a plaque for you from the Awards Review Board. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I will uh, present this to you on behalf of Tampa City Council. Then we'll have folks from the community come to give you gifts and whatnot. But on behalf of Tampa City Council for your amazing work and being Tampa Firefighter of the Quarter and everything that you do every day, we present to you this commendation, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you buddy. God yes, bless sir. you. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Council, City Staff, Nick Stocko, President of Tampa Firefighters Local 754. Uh, we want to uh, congratulate uh, Paramedic Ponte on his hard efforts. Uh, he saved a life, and not just any life, uh, a kid's life. So thank you. Here's a plaque on behalf of your brothers and sisters, 754, and a gift card. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. We'd like to present you with this gift card to enjoy at any of our restaurants, any of the Columbia restaurant locations, Uleli, Casa Santo, Stefano, or Goody Goody. Um, thank you so much for all that you do, and congratulations on this recognition. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Mary Lou Bailey. I'm here on behalf of uh, Zoo Tampa. I serve on the board there. Congratulations. I hope if my kids are in trouble, you're nearby. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> awesome work. Um, all the respect in the world. We're presenting you with an annual membership to the zoo. It's a $245 value, and we hope you enjoy it with your friends and family in good health, yes, since you keep everybody else healthy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. And we have a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I just want to present the ball to you for a job well done. We are all very proud of you and what you have accomplished throughout the facility. And though this one doesn't have uh, your name yet, it's coming. <laughs> Morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steps Tony Service. Congratulations on the job well done. Thank you. Um, it's very, I'm very confident in saying that we're going to be talking about you more come the banquet time. And this is just a remarkable story. Um, and congratulations and, and thank you for everything you do for our community. So on behalf of Todd Steph and Steps Towing, we'd like to present you with a night out in our company limousine and a gift card to go out to dinner. Uh, enjoy some time off. You deserve it. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Anne I'm here on behalf of Tampa Theater. Uh, so congratulations. Thank you for your hard work and your service in our community. And I'm honored to give you the gift of a membership to Tampa Theater and Candy, so you can come and visit us on the Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Good morning, John. Good morning. Donna McBride with the stress. And first, I want to apologize. I did not see the announcement in time. It's okay. But I will be getting you a gift certificate from the Stratus Center to enjoy his show. Okay. Thank you Thank so you much, much for your service, and thank you on behalf of that family who still have a little boy. And Keep doing it. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Good. Are you tired yet? A little bit. Well, after you have all of this stuff, you're going to have to go work out again. So, and, yeah. uh, Chicho's Restaurant Group, Steve Michelini, I'm here representing these various people who like to honor and recognize your contribution. Um, and it, we can't say enough about the paramedics and the people that are in Tampa Fire Rescue as well as Tampa Police Department for what they do every day. So thank you for doing your job and congratulations. On behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, we're providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself, $50, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Yummy House uh, China Bistro. And I know the chief is looking over your shoulder. She wants to go there. <laughs> they, uh, <clears throat> Tampa Metropolitan Y is providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself there. Bella Brava, which is in the Midtown, uh, you can enjoy yourself there, lunch or dinner. And on behalf of Meat Market, which is in the uh, uh, Old Hyde Park District, you can go and enjoy yourself there. So congratulations, and thank you for your contribution. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, if you'd like, you can say a few words, and then we'll hear from other council members. Right. Go ahead.
Good morning, Council. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor. Um, I'd like to thank Chief Tripp and all Tampa Fire Rescue Chiefs that are here today and staff uh, for presenting me with this award. Um, I'd like to thank my captain who's not here right now, Rush Roberts, for nominating me for this uh, award. Um, I never thought I would be up here to receive anything like this. It's a little, uh, feel a little starstruck. But uh, I take great pride in what I do every day for Tampa Fire Rescue, and I'm glad that I am here to be able to represent them in Station 5. And we'll just always strive to do better and continue on the path that I'm on. Let's go to Councilman Miranda this time. <laughs> we'll switch it up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My friend, it's, uh, you train for these things, but at the end of the day, it's the instinct that you have to save someone that's in danger. You may have all the training in the world, but if that reaction is not within you as a human being, then that training trained you, but it wasn't there. In your case, it was there. And when you look at yourself uh, and what you do, when you see that kind of, where the impact of a body under a car, I can just imagine what went through your mind. I can just imagine the thought process of who do I call first, who do I, and you did it perfectly. You went exactly how you were trained and you did save a life. And unfortunately, the grandmother passed away. But when doing these things of heroic needs, that's what it is, it's a heroic deed that you did uh, you to be complimented far more than just accommodation. And I appreciate what you've done. And I don't know which Fonte family you're from, but they're all nice people and they're all very good. That means I covered them all appreciate for you. It. So I'm not going to ask you which part of the Fonte family, but congratulations to you for being a Fonte also. Thank you. That's been good. Mr. Randy, you said it's uh, not just training, it's instinct. It's instinct. You get on scene and you go into action. You don't panic. You go do what you have to do. In saving people, time, seconds are the essence. You got to move. You don't have time to think. You just got to move. So I know that feeling. What that feeling? That stressful feeling. But you got to get it done. No matter what, you got to get it done. So this council, we appreciate your efforts. The city appreciates your efforts. That family appreciates your efforts, even though we lost one. But we were able to save one. So again, thank you for the instinct yes, sir. in doing what you needed to do. Congratulations today. Thank you. Council, what are your um, I want to echo that. Um, Instinct can't be taught. That's just, um, that's just the way that goes. You have to, you just have to be able to, to take the training, um, which I know you continuously have uh, after um, spent some time at Station One a few weeks ago and saw all the amazing work that you all do preparing, just preparing for that moment. And you were able to prepare enough that when something like that happened, you just, you just were able to react and, uh, and saved that child's life and really, you know, saved a family. Um, so thank you, all. thank you for that. And, you know, we look forward to seeing more of you. Uh, you're young, you'll be here for a while, and uh, we're happy to have you here, and congratulations, mm -hmm. and look forward to, to seeing what you do next. Thank you. Councilman Mascoffa. You're a hero, there's no other way to put it. When I saw the news uh, with that story, uh, now you're here. It's an honor to, to be in your presence because you saved a life. I know the grandmother, you know, I understand the circumstances, but you sprung into action, split uh, second decisions that you made. I don't know if I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I always look up to firefighters because you have a, a, a and just like police, you have a certain courage. You know, you don't, think, you don't think about yourself. You think about the other person and you just go and you do. And, uh, and what you did and what your team did is, is nothing less than heroic. Everybody noticed. I mean, it was all over social media. It was all over the news. You know, this is, this is what inspires people to want to become a firefighter. This is what inspires people to do what you do right there. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. So thank you. 
Uh, thank you for your sacrifice. Uh, thank you for your work, you, your team, your station, everybody there. You know, you, you make tough decisions without, just like that. You know, without even thinking, you go with your training and you know what to do and you do it and you protect us. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Carlson. <coughs> yeah, thank you for your um, common sense, ingenuity, um, initiative. Um, like my colleague, when I saw this, I, it made me so proud to be a part of the city of Tampa. Um, uh, you know, this is one of those cases that, that we all know about that, that make us be proud to be a part of the city. And uh, just to you and all your colleagues on the days when you are facing horrible situations and you feel like uh, you might even wonder why you're in that job, please remember this day and tell everybody that we do care about them and that we want to support them and um, we need you. Our community desperately needs you to protect us and help us to save lives like you've done. Thank you. Paramedic yes, Fonte, uh, first, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see what these brave women and men with the Tampa firefighters go through, go to the fire academy and you'll see exactly what they go through each and every day. Paramedic Fonte, I just attended a graduation for firefighters. And inevitably, in the, one of those graduations, I will hear, you're gonna see things you've never thought you were gonna see. And you will see things you don't wanna see. Seeing a young child and an elderly woman pinned under a car, I more than likely would have just froze and wouldn't have known what to have done. You instinctively called for backup and immediately helped rescue that little girl and to pull the grandmother off from underneath the car. As one of the council people here said, you are a superhero. Thank you for being part of the citizens, excuse me, of the family of Tampa. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. And who's next on the agenda? Is it police or fire? Andrew Carter. Andrew Carter. Andrew Carter. Okay, so let's welcome Mr. Carter and his family and whatnot else. Doing good. It is my great pleasure, uh, Tampa City Council, to uh, have a Tampa City Council commendation for our friend, Mr. Andrew Carter, for his service as president of Tampa Firefighters uh, Local 754. Um, you know, Andrew has done a really, really remarkable job during his time on, on Tampa Firefighters Local 754 in terms of advocating for everyday issues for our firefighters, worker safety, uh, more stations, response times, and just basic bread and butter issues. Uh, he brings with him his own style. Um, and you look at the different presidents of, of Tampa Firefighters Local 754. You have now Nick. Before Andrew, you had Joe Greco, uh, Steve Suarez, of course, before, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody has their own style, and everybody has been effective for what they want to do. Um, Andrew's style is to be cool, calm, and collective, uh, to be firm but fair, and, and whatnot. And oh, and look at that a little. Hey, I want his shoes. <laughs> Uh, those are all, I, yep, the good old you days. You run fast. Yeah. The good old days. But uh, Andrew has done a remarkable job. And if you know Andrew, he's, he's also a very decent person. He's very straightforward with you. Uh, he's very firm and, and fair with people. And he's just a good person. So it's our honor to give this fine gentleman for his work as president of Tampa Firefighters, Local 754, Andrew Carter, a Tampa City Council commendation. So, sir, here you are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Andrew Carter, former president, Tampa Firefighters. So I've seen this mistake made a couple of times, so I'm not going to make it. First off, I'd like to bring my family up. Good man. <laughs> Usually it winds up being the end. They deserve this award just as much as I do. The time commitment it takes. My wife, the, the COO of the Carter household, handles all the logistics in the day-to-day. -day. My daughter, Ella, and my son, Lucas. So. Uh, over the last 10 to 12 years, I found myself in an elected position in the union, starting from trustee, a few terms on the executive board, a couple as VP, and ultimately culminating as president. So I've learned a lot along the way. Some of the things I like to pass on are 
Build bridges, not barriers. Be hard on the issue, but soft on the person. Bring facts, not feelings, because we know budgets don't care about your feelings, right? They only care about the facts. Uh, I've worked with a lot of great people. Uh, the mayor's office has been great, Chief Bennett, uh, CFO Rajero, Kelly Austin, Kimberly Sullivan, I'm sure she's watching this from Turkey. I'm, I'm, I don't know the time conversion, but I'm sure she's, she's on the webcast. Rebecca and Becca, uh, Brandon Darla, Danny Alvarez with the PBA. We've had a very strong public safety presence. Presence. It hasn't been red versus blue, it's been purple. So thank you for your friendships. Thank you for the commendation. And ultimately, thank you for your commitment to public safety. I'm going to end with what my grandfather used to say. Buy more land. That's one thing they're not making any more of. Because we, we need the land for the fire station. So thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. And if I, if I may, Mr. Chair, we have Chief Trick, if you want to say anything. <coughs> Nick Stocko, if you all want to, go ahead, man. Uh, Barbara Tripp, Fire Chief for Tep Fire Rescue, and of course, congratulations, Captain. You know, it's been wonderful working with him uh, for the years that he's been on the job, and of course, since I've been in this position, the relationship that he, we have built over the last year and a half, two mm -hmm. years, you know, has been great. So, like he says, for us building bridges instead of barriers and stuff, and I think we've built a lot of bridges, I'm sorry, built a lot of positive bridges over the last two years, you know, when it comes to negotiation, when it comes to making sure that the men and women of Tampa Fire Rescue is taken care of on both ends, from an administrative point of view, as well as the labor. So, I appreciate the relationship that we've had as far as being the union president, and look forward to you to continue to do great things for Tampa Fire Rescue. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Council, City Staff, uh, Nick Stocko, uh, the successor of Andrew Carter. And, um, you know, this accommodation really um, is just a small piece to say thank you to Andrew and all his hard work. Um, I've known Andrew for over 10 years, and I've um, watched him, wow, over 10 years, probably when I was 18, 17 years old when I was a cadet, like one in the back, and I would ride with Andrew. And now being able to follow in his footsteps is a great honor. I really want to touch on thank you. And like Lewis, uh, Councilman Vieira said, um, being a human being, not only being in this seat uh, for 10 days, I can tell you that it has been incredibly hectic. And <laughs> just like how Andrew was able to, to juggle his son here, how he juggled being able to do everything at home and the work stuff, that's just parts of being a, a good human and time management. So on behalf of the local 754 and the brothers and sisters, we know you're not retiring, but thank you so much, man. Thank, thank you so much for everything. Appreciate it. Right. Councilman Carlson, let's go with you first, please. Thank you. Thanks to your family, beautiful family you have there, and I love the shoes too. Um, I wish we could all wear those. <laughs> For anybody who can't see, they're all lighting up with different lights. Um, uh, thank you. You had big shoes to step into, and you did that well, and you. Um, you guided all of us uh, through the time that you were there and gave us lots of great advice. And um, the, the thing I like the most about you is you were very strategic and long-term thinking and um, you gave a lot of ideas. Unfortunately, we haven't moved them all as quickly as we should, and but we'll keep working to move those forward. So thank you and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Councilman Meniscaca. So this, month's mar this month marks 23 years that we've uh, been friends. I think I was, I was 15, you were maybe 16. You were the first person to teach me to uh, drive a stick shift. I didn't burn out your clutch, <laughs> but uh, I remember that was one of the earlier memories, but we had memory, many memories at uh, Tampa Catholic High School. And uh, you were always a great friend, just a, a good all around person. And uh, as we both grow, and uh, we're here in a professional capacity, uh, you've gone on to uh, represent our generation as president of the union. I mean, I'm. 38, we're 38, 39 years old, we're young. Nick Stocko is, what are you, 33 years old? 32 years old, so a new generation is, is being represented uh, and you've done it well. Uh, you talked about the relationships that you've had with the PBA, with everybody else, and it's cohesive. It's not red and blue, it's purple. Uh, I've always uh, seen your professionalism, you've gone above and beyond, you're dedicated 100%, and most importantly, you have that perfect firefighter mustache. <laughs> I remember showing my, uh, my wife, I was meeting you for something one day, and I go, I got to meet this guy. I went to high school with him, and it's your official portrait with the ax and the mustache. She's like, that's an actor. That's not even, that's not even real. That's perfect. 
But uh, anyways, thank you for all that you do. I know this is not a retirement. Sounds like it. But uh, we have a long way to go. And uh, we appreciate uh, you and your service uh, and everything that you've done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Hurtag. Um, I want to echo the thanks. Uh, when I was appointed, um, you were one of the first people that reached out. And I just want to say thank you for that. Um, and the great work relationship we've been able to have. But even more important, uh, I want to thank you for supporting the firefighters and supporting labor. I mean, you are doing the work that is so incredibly important to make sure that all of your colleagues get what they deserve. And you've done it fairly, and you've, you've, you've come to us, you've worked with the administration to, to share what you want, and you have advocated for them, and, and you don't back down. Um, you should be incredibly proud of that. There is nothing more important than being able to support those around you and support uh, bringing everyone up. And I l love the way you have done that and the way that, that your union is focused on its members. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Goods. Andrew, like Councilwoman said, I mean, from day one, the fire union, you're at our offices. You're at our offices. From day one we come in, you're, you're there shaking hands. Or you come by and see how we doing. Not just to ask for anything, just say, hey, how you guys doing? That means a lot. It's not all give and take. It's, it's, it's a friendship. And you, you, you know, we, we appreciate that. Because you, it shows you, you do care. Like you said, it's not about us versus them. It's how we can get things done. What makes it better for everybody, the city, the people. And, you know, I'm appreciative. A lot of times, you know, you guys will call me, counsel. We want to do something in your district. We got something going on. We want, want you to do this. We got some money for you. We want to do some. I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, let's see. Hey, I didn't, I didn't call them and ask, but it just shows me the commitment you have because, you know, you guys are living in those places, you know, people are coming up to the stations. You guys are actually going to the grocery stores. I think that's what makes the difference, man, because you really, you're, it's like a family, meeting people, you know, touching, you've been to somebody's house before, hey, he's been in my house, you know. It's, it's a difference being a firefighter versus a police officer. It's a different type of feeling. Um, but I just want to say thank you for uh, the way you've treated me. You know, I, I told Nick, every, every leader style is different. You had your style, Joe had his, you know. Nick will have his. But I just think that I think you kept everybody kind of balanced because of that, the way you, way you treat people. So I know Nick is going to do a great job. You know, he's a good guy. He called me as well, too. So I just want to say thank you for being a friend, and thank you for being a friend in this community. Thank you. Councilman Brother. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, if you know Guido Mascalco in high school, tell us about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't burn out the clutch, but I hope he didn't wreck the car. No, no, I didn't wreck it either. All right, he's, he's a great guy, and I'm, I'm glad you guys were, you know, same high school together, and you can continue that for the rest of your life, friendship. But on the serious side of matters, uh, did I ever call you AC? No, a couple times. Yeah, I, I figured when I saw the name Andrew Carter, somebody had to call you AC. <laughs> And uh, the, the, the speech that you said at the beginning of your presentation came from the heart. Uh, you speak with uh, an essence of facts. Uh, it, you have to be trained yourself because you had all the 754 union members speaking and asking for what they felt you need, and you had to come up with a plan to talk to the administration. And in the mannerism in which you presented yourself this morning, I can tell that there was no yelling. I can tell it was nothing but facts, nothing but comparison with other units throughout the, the state and the country. That's what I'm assuming happened because I can tell the way you handle yourself that you are, without realizing, an expert in what you do. And, and these things come from learning on a daily basis. It took some time. Or you were born with that natural gift. And since you have almost 
same haircut that I have, I think you're brilliant. <laughs> thank you. So I, I just want to say thank you and thank the family, your family, for letting you do what you've done for many years and that to help the citizens of the great city of Tampa, you and all your men and women in Local 754, you're very much appreciated. Thank you for all your services. Thank you very much. And lastly, if we can pull up the, the Elmo, I'll end on what uh, Councilman uh, Maniscalco had alluded to. That's the uh, official headshot there. So, uh, so if something, uh, it's our yearbook. So if something goes on, that's, that's what's going to hit the media. So I appreciate it. Thank you all for oh, the and We have Joe and oh. Chairman. Closing. Chair. Thank you. Chair, I'm going to talk to your wife. All right. Let's bring her up. No, no. I, 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 I thank you. I thank you because I'm sure there was plenty of times when you heard his phone ring. And, and you looked down and said, oh, honey, take it, will you please? <laughs> I would call him at all hours. I thank you for allowing me to be able to talk to him because he is a brilliant man. He's a person who knows that dialogue will solve everything. He and I spoke many, many times on many, many different things. And he finally made me agree on a lot of them. <laughs> Andrew, you're a great guy. Thank you for helping me with all the firefighters. Thank you for helping me understand what's going through their heads, what's going through their minds, their wants, their needs, not only for them, but for their families as well. Because we know that their jobs are important, but they do it for one thing, their families. Thank you for helping me, Andrew. You're one hell of a guy. My pleasure. Thank you. And next on the agenda is Darla Portman, correct? Yes. There you go. And so now it is our great pleasure to give a Tampa City Council commendation to Darla Portman for her work with the Tampa Police Benevolent Association. We'll wait, I guess. Well, we'll just go, go forward. No. Well, hang on. Whoa, whoa, wait. Well, let's take our time. Dar Miss Portman is worth it. Darla. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's focus our attention on. This is Mrs. Portman. I start looking for my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And while while we're taking the time, um, <laughs> Councilman Miranda may have to leave at eleven o'clock for a pro uh, previous. Appointment for an appointment that he had scheduled prior. Thank you. We're getting our picture taken by a state representative. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Danny. Good to see you. May I begin, sir? Thank you. It is my great pleasure on behalf of Tampa City Council to give a Tampa City Council commendation to Darla Portman. Uh, she is leaving the Tampa Police Benevolence Association and retiring from the police force, correct? Very yeah. soon. God bless you. So, you know, one thing I didn't mention with uh, Mr. Carter that I think is very relevant also to Darla is not just their work that PBA and Tampa Firefighter 754 have done together, but also with ATU. I've seen that change over the last three, three and a half years, which is the three city of Tampa unions working together on common goals and having each other's backs whenever it really, really counts because it's all about worker dignity and dignity on the job. Uh, Darla Portman has been the president of the Tampa PBA for how long, two and a half? Three and a half years. Three and a half years during some very, very difficult times for our city and for her members. And throughout that time, Darla has been a staunch supporter of law enforcement, a strong supporter of the mission that they do every single day. Uh, her members have gone through uh, civil unrest, uh, a pandemic, and many, many different issues. And throughout this time, Darla's message has always been consistent, which is that she and we should all respect and honor the work that law enforcement officers do every single day. We live in a city, a city of Tampa, that is very pro first responder. That includes police officers. That includes our firefighters and we support the work that they do. And if you doubt that, then listen to the calls that we get all the time. One of the biggest issues we hear about is crime, 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 and getting police officers support for that work and the fight on crime. 
So in that regard, it is our great pleasure and honor to give Darla Portman a Tampa City Council commendation. I know Darla, I think she's a very good person, and I'm also honored to also call her a friend. It's funny because we have a lot of discussions, including on politics, where we don't always agree. Right. But you know what? We're friends. She's a good lady. Uh, she's a cop, and she does a great job in her job every single day. So Darla, on behalf of Tampa City Council, my friend, it is a pleasure to give you a Tampa City Council commendation. Thank you, there sir. There you are. God bless. So um, I want to tell you guys that I have appreciated all your wisdom and conversations that we've had. I appreciate the city, Mayor, Chief Bennett, uh, Kelly Austin and Kim Sullivan and Becca Carr. Um, we work really well together. And just like Andrew said, it's building bridges. I had a lot of bridges I had to build when I came back here that were destroyed previously. And I want to just say that I hope that you guys continue to, to build these bridges and keep these bridges strong. Because the relationships are what's important. It's important to all of us that we're able to have these conversations, even if they're hard. Um, like Lewis said, we may not always agree, but we always respect each other. And as a police officer, I always felt that I had to respect everybody because you don't always know what people do unless you walk in their shoes. And um, I really appreciate this. This is humble to me um, to just to get an award. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, and you know what's funny? The, the commendation <laughs> fell out. So there, we got to put it back in. I was like, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Okay, let me put that back in there. And so, um, and now I know we have some individuals here. Um, if uh, Brandon Barclay or Representative Alvarez, if any of y'all want to come or speak, if you want to speak, you may. Sure. <laughs> Brandon Barclay, uh, Tampa PBA. Um, so, obviously, uh, I know this is eating her alive. She doesn't like any of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. I'll keep it real short. But I came to the department 13 years ago. Uh, my very first day, I was teamed up with Darla. Uh, and we basically have been partners ever since. Um, so, I been an honor to serve with you on the street and as your sergeant arms and vice president. So congratulations. There you are. Good morning, council. So Darla and I actually go way back. We were officers together working the stadium. I remember us actually flapping traffic together, trying to get the cars in and out, sweating in the hot sun. Yep. So from there, we became friends ever since. And I'll tell you, they talked about all the great things she did as a president and she did, but she was also a great cop and she was that community police officer. She'll tell you stories where the community would just call her and they would know her and they would invite her to birthday parties for her own kids. I mean, that's a neighborhood cop. And, and she was not only a great president, she was a great cop and we're definitely gonna miss you. Thank you. Chief Representative Alvarez, come on up. Come on up. I wasn't expecting, thank you city council, thank you for having us. Um, one thing I need you to uh, know and understand about Darla um, you may not always agree with her, but there's one thing you will always understand is her love for her department and her city was unwavering. Um, I remember when she came and found me when I was all sad that I had lost running for judge and she said, you got purpose, um, will you help me spend the message? And I said proudly because I knew that uh, she, her heart and uh, her everything was behind the men and women she served and so we will miss you. Uh, it has been an honor to serve with you and I uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Council. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. By all means. Hi, Reva. Good morning. I'm Reva Iman, and it's a pleasure. I'm here for someone else, but I didn't know <laughs> you was here. Um, I was, I still am the resident council president for Robles Park Village and association president over there. Um, this person here. Um, made great changes in Robles Park. Um, it is an honor that I had the opportunity to meet her. I'm glad that the community service that she did in Robles Park, uh, it brought change. And when you say community policing, she's an example of community policing. Um, it's not always about the crime. She got out, she taught the people, she made us comfortable. And it is an honor to see you today here in Kenneth Award. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So now we will hear from Tampa City. Actually, no, wait. We will hear from you. Go, wait. I already spoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let's go with Councilman Moran. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Darla, I, uh, I can see in your face and your heart is telling you, why am I leaving? But that's a decision you made, and uh, we're going to miss you. Your actions uh, when you were the leader, and you still are the leader, it's something to be 
behold to because when you look at the amount of individuals you have over a thousand and, and more maybe in other areas it's incumbent upon you to handle that many people at one time and i don't see how they all fit in the little office you have to, where your where your union uh, office is at but it's incumbent upon individuals like yourself that you have worked out a balance you have brought in the best of the best you have worked with individuals and made them better than what they thought they could be and because of talking to them and making sense of what life is really about. It's not about what I want or what anybody else wants. It's reality of life that you made those officers, the union officers and the non-union officers, if there's any, to say thank you for what I'm doing. You have to have it in your heart to do the job that you're doing. Your mind tells you one thing, your heart tells you another. And sometimes you say, huh. I should have listened to my heart. But in your case, you are almost 100% proof, and I don't mean liquor, <laughs> but I, 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 this, the decision that you made and which you've handled yourself here in the chambers, and I'm sure during the negotiation with the city where like the gentleman from the you know, fire department was courageable because it was done in a civil manner. And in those civil matters is where you shine at. And thank you again for what you've done, not today, tomorrow, but forever. Thank you. We always will miss you forever. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Charles. Councilor Goods. You know, I've uh, been around a long time, and I've known mostly all of the PBA presidents, back into Bob Sheehan. And my recollection is certainly correct. Darla is the first woman president of PBA. Yes. So let me give you a hand for that because hey, I know how difficult the job is being the PBA president is. Trust me, I know. From grievances, from disputes, from officers feel that they're not getting their, their fair just of uh, labor, uh, of complaints. And most Perfect time is when a police shooting occurs. The PBA president and the staff go on scene. It, it, and I, you know, I've experienced that, so I know how, how stressful that, that can be in trying to get the facts out. Well, what kind of Ken say about Darla? Because Darla knows a good personal friend of mine, and he thinks the world of Darla. She knows what I'm talking about. And I think the world of Darla too, because you know, Darla called me, we talked, we can agree to disagree. And that's good though. You can walk away expressing the thoughts, the concerns, and make what the decisions have to be made. But it's over. And I appreciate that. I know where your heart is. And you did a great job with your tenure as the president. Because I know how it is to, to work with those guys. I know. So I know you tell heat. But I just want to say thank you for, you know, giving me the calls when you need to give them to me. You know, I call you sometimes and say, all you need to do is do that. So it works both ways. But uh, you got, what, a month ago? A month ago, right? Yep. And it's going to come fast. And I'm going to say, you know, farewell to you. Mm -hmm. Because that last day, let me give you that last talk on that uh, walkie-talkie. Everyone gets choked up. Okay, no one tell you they do. No one, no one. I know I said they haven't got choked up. And then you will wake up the next work day. Where's my car? Where's my car? Where's my uniform? But it's not there anymore. That's the experience I've had and many others, and you will have it too. But I would say go and enjoy yourself. Do the things that you never got a chance to do. Do something different. Still support the police, but do something different. Because you have that community spirit in you. And you can make a change in other lives, other places. But again, I, I appreciate you. and God bless you, darling. God bless you. Thank you. Just for our time. I want to say thank you for doing the work, helping your fellow officers, because that's what union is all about. 
Um, also very proud that you are the first woman. There's a lot to be said for that. Um, we have a different level of ex expectations and being able to do that for three and a half years in a male dominated field is really impressive and you should always carry that. Um, and I know that uh, your, your colleagues and your fellow officers really appreciate everything you've done to work for them, to get them what they need, and to make sure that everyone in the city knows what they need. Um, that speaks volumes, and labor is so important. So thank you for all the work you've done on making sure that you are uh, protecting the interests of those that you serve with. And congratulations on your retirement. Like, uh, um, like Councilman Good said, I know you'll find something else wonderful to do, um, but take that strength with you. Thank you. Councilman Mascot. Thank you. Congratulations. We're really going to miss you. I've always enjoyed working with you. We've had a great relationship. Um, and before you, there was Abe and Vinny. And, you know, I've been here almost eight years, and I've had the pleasure of working with so many uh, in the PBA, and most recently you. But uh, as Councilman Miranda mentioned, we're, go we're going to miss you. Congratulations on all your successes and on your coming retirement. But, uh, you know, it's a void that, that is going to be there. Brandon is here, and, and I know he will lead the way uh, in, a, in an excellent way. But uh, again, we, we will miss you, and we appreciate you, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sad that you're leaving the city. Um, uh, four years ago, the PBA um, endorsed my opponent. And so when I started, I didn't, I was worried that I was going to have a hostile uh, reception. And um, instead, you and I talked. And uh, I said, you know, I want to help the men and women police force. And you said, I want to help you, educate you, work with you. Let's set the past be. And that's what we did. And, and I appreciate that. Um, I think we agreed most of the time, not all the time, but we agreed most of the time. And um, you always took my call, which I was thankful for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a couple years ago, the, the, our city and our country faced some difficult times. And you and I had some great conversations through that. And you gave me perspectives and insights that I never would have gotten um, had and, and I think that's from your unique ability to uh, read people and read situations and and understand the nuances of it and so we went way beyond politics to understand how we can work together to do what's in the best interest of the seats of the city and there's this balance between civil rights and protecting the city and we know we have to walk that line and I think I think we all have walked that carefully and um, and we need to continue to be supportive because the the, the, the people that you represent have been overworked and stressed out, um, especially through those difficult times and COVID and everything. And um, we need to continue to do more to support them. So thank you for being my guide through all this. And as you go on to um, do whatever you're going to do next, please stay in touch and let us know how we can help because I'm sure you'll be very, very successful whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Darla has carried on two jobs, much like Nick did. She was, she was an officer, and she was the president of the PBA. Now, that's a 24-7 job, both of them. Yes, and a mom. <laughs> Again, I'm going to be selfish, but Darla, thank you for taking my phone calls late at night. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to walk into the PBA office and say, Darla, I need to speak with you. You've always been there for me. You've helped me work things out in my head. We would sit down, we would talk, we would discuss. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you for being there for your fellow officers and helping them. Darla, you're not, you're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> you're, you're not going. I know you'll be involved some way, somehow. <laughs> Darla, thank you for all the years you have served as an officer, and thank you for the years you have served as president of the PBA. Thank you, Darla Portman. Councilman Goo.
Well, good morning again, council members and chairman. As you saw, we had some great accomplishments early this morning with our police and fire, some heroic folks, and some people who served the city well. But this morning, you're going to see some superstars now, some folks who work every day in and out to serve our community, being with, with activism, being with caring for our elderly, being caring for our young people, being good citizens and role models in our community. So the first one I'd like to bring up is Ms. Valentia Berry. As council know, I always use the phrase, I give people their flowers while they're with us to make sure that they, they understand that why they work so hard for our community, they must be recognized. And Ms. Berry has been that. Many of you have gone to the Gourmet Gents uh, fundraiser uh, during election times, during different times of the year. But Ms. Berry has been there for forever and for putting those on. Serving as the president for the National Coalition of Hundred Black Women is a, a big job to do, a big honor to have. So this morning I wanted to recognize Miss Berry for her work with that affair. That's one of a great affair. I just attended one mm -hmm. and it was great. And I think this year y'all gonna change the theme up a little bit. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna, gonna it. We're gonna change it up this time. Years. So this morning. Presented Ms. Valentia Berry in recognition of Valentia Berry, a native of Tampa, Florida. A devout advocate and community servant with over a decade of dedicated community service, Ms. Berry serves as the president of the local Tampa Bay area chapter of the National Coalition on Black Women, Inc. In addition to a member and first vice president of the Tampa Metropolitan Chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. All right. <laughs> She was recently appointed chair of the Tampa Bay Healthcare Collaborative Board of Directors, a nonprofit organization that promotes and advocates the health and wellness of those underserved through community collaborations. Bluthia Berry has built intentional partnerships with key public and private sector organizations, including Hillsborough and Pinellas area schools, employers, local and national colleges, and universities, and peer institutions. Ms. Berry has devoted countless hours empowering her local community with the skills, knowledge, and the avenues to make a difference in their day-to-day -day lives. On the leadership of Ms. Berry, the NCBW 100 Inc. has held numerous voter registration drives, financial education seminars, and STEM camps for children. She has continuously exceeded expectations and set the standard of leadership in her current role as the Dean of Workforce Development and Corporate Partnerships of St. Petersburg College. Something I did not know. Yes, just newly appointed. The City Council of the City of Tampa's proud present accommodation to Valentia Berry, who exemplifies the type of community advocate who is courageous, determined, devoted to enhance our community. You're a great asset to the City of Tampa. Thank you so much, Ms. Berry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Goose. Thank you, Tampa City Council. Uh, first, I'd like to give honor to God, who's ahead of my life. Uh, I would like to thank my family, my friends, my boss who is here, and, uh, you know, community service is the rent we pay to be in here on earth. And I just like to attribute to my shero, my mother, Antonia Barber, who is in the audience right there, uh, who instilled in all of her children that uh, community service is what we do as a family to help our community. And the only way our community can be what it is is if you do the work, right? And that's why you all are here, elected officials and those who are public servants who are just doing the work to ensure our next generation as councilmen. You talked about, I'm, only, I'm just turned 40. I'm not ashamed of that. And uh, the next generation to continue to do the work that we do. I have many mentors. I thank all of my members who supported me because I was the pandemic president, uh, leading them through the charge where we're all at home and continue to still raise funds. Thanks to all of our supporters. This year, our Gourmet Gents is a gala. 30 years, there have been men who supported us for all 30 years to ensure that the funds that we raise go back to the community. So all of our programs are free, free STEM camps for students, 
Um, we just received dollars from AT&T and many others who believe in the work that we do, because guess what? The kids need it, our community need it, it's just families. And I'm just so proud to uh, get this award. As my mom said, uh, awards are earned, um, not given, and I just appreciate this award. Thank you so I appreciate much. appreciate you. <laughs> Great. Councilman Carlson. Thank you for all that you do. It's a very impressive list, and it's probably just a little bit of what you what you actually do. So thank you so much. You know, government can only supply so much, and in America, you know, we we have the benefit of volunteers like you who care about our community, and and the little bit that we're able to do in government is amplified so much more by folks in the community. You talked about paying rent. I mean, you're paying rent for lots and lots of people um, uh, with all the service that you do. So please. Keep us posted on what you're doing and let us know how we can support you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for all the work that you're doing. I, I, I read up on you before because I always like to uh, just see on the background of folks. And, you know, something that Councilman Carlson said is right, which is government needs to be supplemented by private endeavors and initiative. And government can always feed the stomach, but it can't always heal the heart. And that's where good folks like you come in. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you and congratulations for uh, this recognition. Uh, you said it, the, you know, the service is, is the rent we pay for, for our time here on earth and you exemplify that. We thank you for all that you do and uh, again, congratulations. Thank you. Councilman Hurtak. I also really like that saying. I wrote it down. I'm going to save that. Community <laughs> service is the rent we pay. Um, and I, I know exactly what that's like. Uh, my mother taught me the very same thing. We did it as a family. and. You know, I've always just, it's, it's just, a, it becomes a part of who you are. You just can't imagine living life and not thinking about others. And when you have that in your heart, you just, it's just, it's just who you are. When you see a need, you can't walk away from it. And I just want to say thank you for that. It's, it, it is a special gift. It is a gift. It's, it is not a burden, it's a gift. And I just uh, want to say thank you for all the work you are doing to share your gift and encouraging others, I'm sure, to follow in that gift giving. So congratulations again, and um, we are absolutely proud to have you in the city of Tampa. Thank you. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Barry, congratulations again for the award. Uh, Community service is something that no government can do the work that someone in the neighborhood does because they're the closest to the individuals who really need it and to express what they need. But more than that is that as life goes on, you realize at an early age that like your mother's here today, what your mother would say when you were a child, you would say, ah, don't worry about it. I know what I'm doing. But as you get older, you go back and you say, you know, my mother was right, not one time, but 100% of the time. And uh, I guess I got bald because my mother pulled me by my hair so many times to straighten me out <laughs> that I, I, I had to listen to all these stuff. But you, you, you really value life when you give back to life. And that's exactly what you're doing now. And you've done it for a long period of time. So when you help someone, a hand up instead of a push down, you certainly accomplish a lot. And we want to thank you and all of your 100 women to say thank you for your organization. Keep doing what you do because you solve the problems of society before they become a problem. That's thank right. you so very thank much. You. you know, some people walk the walk, some people talk the talk. You're doing the do. <laughs> and what you have done for this community exemplifies the heart and soul that you have. Thank you for everything that you have done for the community. Thank you for everything you have done for Tampa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got a lot. I'm the dean and I got to meet. Okay. Let's go to the next one. We'll do them up here since we've got to, right. got to get them out of the way by then. This way. All right, Miss Robin Lockett. Mr. Vice Chair, this uh, a 
accommodations being given today, uh, it was a continuous for a couple months because we had an election going on, and so we uh, had to move uh, to today. All right. I'm left handed. Left handed? Oh, well, come on, where are you? <laughs> well, uh, again, today is a day that I've, I've, I've got several that are what I call superstars in our community who've been working, doing the work. And, and Ms. Lockett is no, no different than Ms. Ms. Berry. Uh, but Ms. Lockett has a, a special gift of galvanizing people, those who can't fend for themselves and speak for them. And she's done that throughout the years. So t today, I'd like to recognize Robin Lockett in recognition of Robin Lockett, an empowered community advocate with over two decades of experience and a wavering de dedication to enhance her community and removing systematic barriers, Ms. Lockett has shown beyond a doubt to be devoted and dedicated fundamental organizer for the rights of citizens all over the city of Tampa. She believes that education equals empowerment. Her purpose is to empower the community with information so they can make informed decisions about issues directly affecting them with the most accurate information. I can say that is true. Robin Lockett is a valued community stakeholder, the regional director of Tampa Bay for Florida Rising, who has also had position with the NAACP as a political chair, hosting political forums to equip the community with information on candidates and voting. She also served as the African American liaison for supervisor elections. Most recently, she is recognized, she was organized, she has organized a grassroots fight around the housing crisis that has affected many underprivileged and indigenous communities. She led a rally to the polls on affordable housing and has been a vocal ag activist around this initiative. The City uh, Council of the City of Tampa is proud to present this combination to Robert Lockett, who exemplifies this type of community leader and grassroots activist who is steadfast, courageous, fearless, and devoted to enhancing her community. Presented this day, the 10th day of January 25th. It's Robin Lockett. person that's lost from words and I don't have a timer on with that says three minutes so I wrote my notes <laughs> uh, first of all I give all glory to God council councilman goose councilman I would like to thank you for this accommodation it's heartfelt uh, just in the recognition of the work that I've been involved in over the years I often say that innovation and uh, ideas around my work within the community is God driven I am very intentional I move with purpose. It has always been about the empowerment of people, and I always want to see people win. I work within the community, staying, staying in my lane uh, to make a difference, whether it was as a political chair of the NAACP, past president of the uh, Hillsborough County Democratic Black Caucus, or in my current position with Florida Rising. And Council, you guys have experienced the, my position with the Florida Rising. <laughs> um, now with my current position, uh, Florida Rising, you've got an opportunity to see uh, what can be done when the community, with community and partnerships. It's about being consistent, doing, the, doing your homework, having those, conversation, having those conversations and being realistic about change one bite at a time. We've, all, we've been able to work together to create and change policy. I've been able to see the difference in people their understanding, their outlook, their perspective, being now, being now that they understand the process. I'm a firm believer uh, people do better most of the time when they know better. I treat people how I want to be treated. I believe in consistency, and, I being, and being consistent takes a lot of time and work, and a lot of people don't, are not willing to do that. Everyone can be in the same room, hear the same music, see the same thing and have a different experience. That's the key of listening. A leader can be led, a leader, I'm sorry, a leader being able to be led, and I've had great teachers at being led. The, uh, Ms. Betty Reed, she was a leader of mine. She was, the, 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 she was my village, right? She was my confidant, my friend, a second mom. Ms. Spencer, she taught me about community when I was with NAACP. 
And I can't forget uh, my mom. I am who I am because of my mom. And I'm so proud of that. Um, again, I want to thank you. I look forward to continuing to work with you uh, to make this community better. I, I, continue, I look forward to continue to have the, the community be more engaged to understand what's going on uh, uh, with them and, and, and be a part of that uh, solution. So thank you again. And I want to thank uh, my friends, family, for attending. And where's my son? Can I bring him up? I want my son to come up. He flew in from Canada, and I, I, I didn't know he, I knew he was coming, but I didn't think he was going to make it. So this is my son. One of my sons. My youngest son. My youngest son. So thank you. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think Mr. Malik had asked me for words, but I know he worked so hard. Poor Mr. Malik. Oh, and I have a second son. My second son is in California. He's my oldest son, Cedric. So I know he's possibly watching. My name is Malik Abdullah, and I'm a member of Florida Rising um, with Robin. And looking at the work that she has done and the work that she's presently done, I think she deserves all those accolades that these people brought with the gift, et cetera, to the other people. She deserved that type of attention. And from you people, she deserved the greatest of support. If you don't support that, then you're reflecting an ignorance of what the community need. This lady is aware of this, so she need all the support she can. And the members behind her, <clears throat> they support her too. I mean, I'm flabbergasted that we didn't have all those people standing here on the wall to, to give these people these gifts and these awards, that she, they wouldn't recognize this lady. Absurd. It's a, it's a continuation of a suppressive. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Good. <laughs> and and, and, and we, Ms. Mallett, again, we, 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 we thank you for your words, but, but the, the accommodations that we give our citizens are from our hearts for what they've done. The work that the police officers and firefighters get, that is a different type of ceremony that is given to those folks. We have two different types of ceremony. But we do She's thank you. But, but we still thank you for that. But again, we're going to move on. My sister, I appreciate all the work you've done. Thank God you. bless you. Continue to do your good work. Right? Thank you. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Council's going to come. Council Cross. Yeah, to your to your sons, um, hopefully the one in California is watching, but they can be very, very proud of their mother for all the hard work that she's doing. Um, uh, I appreciate the journey we've been on and um, uh, all the information you give. And you know, you're you're out there as you say, talking to people every day, and you bring that feedback back to us. It's important because uh, people who show up in the on the audience here, the emails we get, they aren't always reflective of the broader community. And you're knocking on so many doors that you're really getting uh, feedback. The other thing, and I don't I don't know if you'll like this title, but um, I, when I've asked people in other cities, what do we need to do to make Tampa better? One of the first things they say is we need more professional organizers. And uh, first of all, we need organizers to bring the community out so that we can hear the community. But we need professional organizers who understand how to do the research, to understand who they're presenting to, what the context is, what's happened before, uh, understand the politics of what can happen when, uh, work with the elected officials. And so it's not just... Um, people coming and giving their opinion yeah. is that you actually engage us and other organizations to have a, a dialogue and you take the long-term view of it. So I appreciate your organization in supporting you to do that as well. Before, um, uh, a few years ago, I thought the best organizer in town was uh, Tim Haberline and then um, uh, council member or chair Cicho hired him and unfortunately we took him off the table, but he was brilliant at organizing groups and bringing people to the table and, um, and you are, um, uh, the, it, it, from what I see here anyway, the lead uh, professional organizer right now, I hope that you can help train a whole generation of other people to do what you do because we need more people like you to make sure the community is fully engaged and that we're listening to and solving problems in the whole community. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Robin, for all the work that you've done throughout the years. We worked together a number of things. And again, I was going through my head on a lot of the things that you've advocated for that, that really you, you had a unique touch on that, that passed this city council and, and that did very well. I think of the, um, the tenant advocate position. Uh, funds for Bayer Legal Services, for ass legal assistance for folks being kicked out of their house, mm -hmm. um, the Tenants' Bill of Rights after it was voted down, bringing mm -hmm. it back to Tampa City Council, um, many, many different things. I know you worked recently on the uh, attorney for the CRB, uh, and we moved that forward. And, and, and a big thing that's not always in the paper is your advocacy in a lot of these apartments where people live in, in terrible conditions that no person should live in. I mean, Florida Rising played a real pivotal role in Timber Falls. Um, we've been out there many, many times together. And because of y'all's work, there are almost two dozen uh, code enforcement cases uh, that, have, that have gone through, uh, been open uh, and whatnot for, uh, for Timber Falls. That's a big deal. Yeah. So you do stuff in here, you do stuff outside, and you always wear your heart on your sleeve. And we've talked many times, and I, and I just value all the work that you do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, ma'am. And congratulations on this recognition. You know, you're a genuinely good person. Your heart is in the right place because you've committed your life to doing good, to helping people, to lifting people up, and to righting wrongs. And uh, Councilman Vieira, listed so many things that because of you and because of the work that you've done with your team and everybody that you've organized uh, have come to fruition. So we thank you for that and we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Quirtec. Um, I also want to thank you. I want to thank you, uh, you know, when, when I joined council, um, you know, we had a conversation almost immediately, and I think you've mm -hmm. said to me, you didn't know what to expect with sure me. Didn't. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And so I appreciate you know you reaching out and just starting that conversation. And we've been able to collaborate on many things. Yeah, and it's yeah. been really exciting. That. It's been wonderful to work with you in the community. And I didn't know much about affordable housing when I started. And now I feel like we have worked really well to bring more things forward to the city. And that could not have been done without you and the support that you have behind you and all the people you bring with you and all of your organizing ability to, to make sure people know what they are owed and what we can do for them. And it's because of you. So I want to say thank you again. Um, thank you for your friendship and thank you for everything that you do for this community every single day. I appreciate it. Councilman Moret. Thank you, Robin Lockett, again. I've heard it many times already. Thank you for what you've done and continue to do. And it goes back to your sympathy to help someone else. You are a leader because you were born to lead. You take the opportunity to express the things of the those that have very little voice because they've been muted to say their voice Amen. and you unmute the facts. Yeah. And for that alone, you should be accommodated for that. And it's very difficult to be in the position where you turn around and every time you think you're going one step forward, you're taking a half a step backwards. And, and that's a position you're in. And, and so it's, it's incumbent upon all of us to make sure that those in need get the help just, I think yesterday or the day before, we had a call at the office about one unit that had a problem and I asked Mayor to turn it over to the city so they can go out and check it out. But, but these things are rapid all over, not only the city of Tampa, but more so in other cities. So what we see here is not an exception of the rule. It is the rule all over that when you buy something and you sell it for a profit, then that individual buys it and what happens? It goes up because they got to make the payment. And society now, when you look at costs, I, it's very difficult to live and understand that the week is coming, you got to make a car payment or whatever, and you got to make the rent payment. All of a sudden, your rent payment went up by 30 or 40%. It's not good. It's very difficult to solve. But thanks to you, you opened the eyes of not only this city, but the whole county and maybe the state of Florida. Congratulations what you've done and trying to help people. That's the main thing. It's helping people. Thanks you again. Thank you. Robin. <laughs> Ms. Lockett, you have been the speaker for people without a voice. You have been the fighter 
for people who could not fight or did not know how to fight. You have been there for so many people and you have done so many things for so many. Thank you, Robin Lockett. Thank you. Miss uh, Denise, you she? Oh, right. Go ahead, Miss Denise. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, another special hero in our community. Ms. Denise Matei James, as you know, Ms. Denise has served uh, on the estate of beautification for our East Tampa CRA uh, for many, many years. She helped do the first Christmas tree lighting uh, at the Young Middle Magnet and over at the police station. A lot of people don't know that. You should put a Christmas tree behind the station, behind there. Uh, and just a general person who's been trying to beautify East Tampa, as you know, that's what we're trying to do to get rid of our slum and blight. And she's been doing that throughout the years, serving on the CAC uh, for that, that committee. As you know, when I became a councilman, I said, well, we need to take our Christmas tree lighting to a bigger step and incorporate what Ms. Jane's been doing and actually take it out of the gym and bring it to a pond so when people drive down in East Tampa, they can see how beautiful East Tampa <laughs> is with our Christmas trees. For the last four years, we've been having our Christmas tree lighting that most of you have attended. We expanded that up into the north end of town, the Sulphur Springs area in North Tampa. So Ms. James decided to step down after her last uh, tree lighting this year. Uh, she's getting up there and, and she wants to relax a little bit. But well, we want her still to, to come back and still continue to help. We always can use the help. Uh, I know Cedric said they've got some great ideas moving forth and we want to make sure we keep her legacy alive who started our Tristan programs in East Tampa. So this morning, I'd like to recognize the recognition of Denise Mate James, a Tampa native, a de devoted, devoted community activist, and activist with over 50, 50, 50 years of service to her community. Ms. James has served as the East Tampa community diligently for over five decades and has devoted countless hours of time teaching personal resources to, and love to our young uh, children and adults. In 2003, Ms. James retired from the state of Florida after 32 years of dedicated service. Ms. James has previously uh, been noted as one of East Tampa's most notable community activists. As former vice chair of the East Tampa Community Revitalization Partnership and current chair of the Aesthetics and Beautification Committee, she has worked diligently to impact her community. For more than 25 years, she has been actively involved with the Corporation of Developed Communities of Tampa, serving most uh, uh, time as the board secretary. Ms. James is revered in East Tampa community for her efforts to deliver the best and most exceptional projects to help enhance her community. She was instrumental in changing the state in the, in the temperature ponds in East Tampa, adding murals to the Economic Development Office panels and implementing citizens' feedback with a heart and duty to act and make a difference. For over 13 years, Ms. Mate has certainly held a holiday celebration in East Tampa in collaboration with several sponsors and elected officials to a sing along and provided over 3,000 meals and 3,500 backpacks filled with toiletries, clothes, games, winter necessity, and more. Today, the Tampa City Council proudly presents, on this 10th day of January, our accommodation to Ms. Denise Matej James. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It might be yours. All right. Well, I have to put my seeing on so that you guys, so that I can read what I wanted to say. Good morning, City Council Member. Thank you all for uh, this great honor, Councilman Goose and, and the others. Uh, I have my family here in the audience, but uh, uh, they prefer to sit instead of coming up and joining me, and that's okay as long as they're here. Um, I... Uh, I'm very honored for this recognition. I was born and raised in Belmont Heights, East Tampa. 
I have seen many changes and have fought over 50 years to make a difference while at the same time raising three children and working full time for the state of Florida for 32 years. I retired in 2003. There are four areas of the city, east, west, north, and south. East Tampa was the forgotten part of the city with lots of negativity. In 2002, <coughs> members of the Board of Directors for the Tampa Housing Authority reached out to stakeholders in Belmont Heights to come together to nominate leaders to represent community concerns, resulting in the establishment of the East Tampa Community Revitalization Partnership, ETCRP. Following the start of this organization, when former Mayor Pam Maorio was running for office, she built, her, she built her platform on making a difference in East Tampa, and she did, along with Councilman Miranda and members of the City Council at that time, supported the creation of this group. The Council continues to support us. Under the ETCRP, I served as Vice Chair three times. I was also approved and declined the honor of serving as Chair. Several committees were formed to represent various components of the partnership, one of which the Aesthetics and Beautification Committee, A and B, which I chaired for 16 plus years. I resigned on 12-2-22. During my 16 plus years tenure as chair of the A and B committee, these are some of our accomplishments. Changing the unsightly look of the retention pond on Martin Luther King, across from Young Middle Magnet School, now known as Robert Cole, this is being used by students from Young for science projects. The other, Herbert Carrington, is located on 34th Street in Ellicott, across from the former Penisaver grocery store. The, the community appreciate these sites as they use them for walking, community gatherings, picnics, etc. These sites were named after these two longtime community leaders, uh, and Mr. Cole had the opportunity to smell his roses while he is still living. To me, this is very important, as it does no one any good to have things named after them when they cannot be appreciated. I hope, this con I hope consideration can be given to the naming of the new Fair Oaks after Mrs. Better Bell so she can smell her flowers while she's living. Murals on panels located outside the Economic Development Office, and some of this has already been stated. Uh, let's see. A wall dedicated to the A&B Committee is located in the Dr. Frankie Berry Media Center at Middleton Senior High School. This wall depicts various renderings of East Tampa. Of special significance is a mural of noted Tampa resident, Ms. Teresa Manuel, former Middleton student, Middleton teacher, and the first black female from Florida to compete in the Olympics in London in 1948. Now deceased, Ms. Manuel was fortunate to enjoy this honor prior to her death. Due to the constant negativity in this area, I decided to bring focus on something positive, resulting in the beginning of what turned out to be an annual tree lighting celebration. For 13 years of annual events, over 4,000 backpacks filled with replenished school supplies, along with items such as toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, soap, socks, umbrellas, t-shirts, represent a slight only some of the items that were included. I am unable to accept this recognition as these celebrations would not have been possible without the support of two individuals. And I would like to ask Ms. Lalita Lovett uh, to come up. It's good when we, when we get recognition, but I feel slighted if I don't give her her roses while she can smell them. Uh, and I would like to also present this plaque to Ms. Lovett. Without her and Michael Carter, I could not have done. This is not a one-man show. And there's nothing I ever <laughs> asked them to do that they didn't do. They made it happen. Um, in recognition of your dedication, cooperative spirit, leadership, and inspiration for years as it relates to our annual tree lighting, your contribution has made a big difference in the lives of families in East Tampa. We truly could not do this work without you. Thank you. Thank you. Lalita is one of our recreational supervisors at uh, Cyrus Green. And I also have an uh, East Tampa partnership bag for each of you. And I'll leave them with CT to make sure that you guys get these. This is some of the things that we, well, 
that we use and, uh, and distribute to our 400 uh, kids uh, at our annual celebration. Each of you can have one of these. And I guess that's it. And I do want to thank my son, my grandson, my daughter, and all for being here, and my adopted daughter, Lalita, uh, my alumni member, Reverend Mason. Thanks to all of you for being here, and thank you again for this honor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Miranda. Well, I, 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 I've heard it all. I mean, I, you have, uh, you're like the electric bunny. You keep going, and you don't stop, and that's what makes the difference. You know it's not an answer. No, it's just a temporary setback in your case because you continue to work, you continue to get your fellow citizens involved, and you continue to beautify your community. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that make it viable to have a good life. You have to have something. And I remember right where that is at, what you're talking about, close mm -hmm. to there is where I grew up on 26th Avenue, 20th Street. <laughs> And I, I enjoyed it. I had everything in the world. I had a bunch of kids. I had a lovely home that was made out of concrete blocks. And it had even solar panels up for hot water. And it even had a gas heater. And it was called Tampa Housing Authority. Yes. And the name didn't come with it. But I tell you what, we were privileged to be raised in the way we were raised. Because you learn more when you don't have anything than if you're born, you have everything. That's true. It's a difference. Yes, it is. And, and my mother taught me the right way. My father taught me. One day he gave me a dime. He says, if you get in trouble, call somebody else. <laughs> and I never, ever forgot that. And I use that now with my grandkids. But I don't have the dime because now there's no more pay phone. You got to buy a $500 phone for you yeah. to call somebody. But it is what it is. And life changes. But people like yourself always keep doing what is necessary to make the community better. And there can be no better award than what Mr. Good did for you today because you deserve much more than that. Muchisima gracias. Thank you very much for what you've done and what you continue to do. Thank you. You're never going to retire. <laughs> um, thank you for all you do. Um, beautification is not something that people think about every day. And so I want to say thank you so much for your dedication to that. There really, there really is something special when you can go out in your community or when people come into your community and they, they see the beauty in it. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that you saw what could be and you didn't stop until you got what you wanted and what the community wanted. And now you have these two beautiful spaces, but that wasn't enough. You, we, you just kept going to make it even more beautiful and to, to really pull the community in there and make <coughs> these usable spaces. And without that type of creativity and without that type of drive, um, our communities wouldn't be as beautiful as they are. Um, so thank you and your beautiful spirit for bringing beautification. Um, I love that that has been your focus. And I wish you well in uh, your time off because <laughs> true servants never stop, but you're just going to be serving in a different way. I say every, every um, there's a season for everything. And thank mm -hmm. you for your season of helping your community and the entire city. You're welcome. Councilman Mascaca. Thank you for all that you do. You've dedicated yourself uh, wholeheartedly to the community and what you've done. And Councilman Goods has said it all. And, and, and you've spoken as well. So many achievements and so many ways uh, in which you have lifted up the neighborhoods and the community as a whole. So thank you very much. This is very, uh, very well deserved. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, and thank you for all that you do, ma'am, and, and uh, which has been highlighted really well by Councilman Goods and by everybody up here. And, and I think it's so important for us to, to honor and, and respect the people in our community who do a lot to uh, bring forward good causes like you obviously do. So thank you very much. Councilman yeah. Carlson. Yeah, I echo everything everybody else said. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, obviously, you're involved in a lot of different things and very important things. Um, so please keep us posted on those. Let us know how we can um, support you. And, um, and if you have ideas or thoughts of uh, agenda items that we can push forward, please let us know that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you sure you're not mad at me? No, I'm not. <laughs> you're, you're positive you're not mad at me. I prom I'm promise. <laughs> well, I'm going to still say great things about you anyways. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you have done. 
and I'm going to say you are a great leader. Thank you. Whether you know it or not, you are a great leader. A great leader always recognizes the people that help them the most. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for everything you've done for the community. Thank you for not being mad at me. <laughs> <laughs>
city council for what you do. But if you want to get involved and get your hands dirty, please do call me. Um, and remember this, because we as a nation, as a country, we're, we're fighting many battles and wars. But my quote is, if we lose sight of humanity, we lose sight of our purpose. So not, let's not walk in purpose, let's work in purpose. Thank you so much for this honor and this time. Thank you so much for all you've done in the community. Um, please stay in touch with all of us. Um, I think we all like getting our hands dirty, so please let us know what we need to do to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do and for um, just wearing your heart on your sleeve today and speaking from your heart. I can tell that you're very passionate and sincere about what you do, and I'm glad you, you're being honored. Thank you. Thank you. you. And uh, congratulations on, on being honored, but uh, thank you for your dedication. Your, your heart and soul is poured into this and what you do and all that you do, and we are very grateful to, to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you. That's where we're back. Um, thank you again. Uh, when I met you yesterday, you didn't tell me you were coming to visit. Um, so congratulations. Um, a wa an honor well deserved. Uh, and you need to tell us about the laundry, a uh, laundry for hope. Laundry for hope. Yes. And it is going to be February 11th. Yes. At uh, Tampa Tam Coin. At Tampa Coin and Laundry mm -hmm. on uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard, 1613. It will be from 10 to 2. We will, it'll be free laundry day. Uh, we will be serving the people in the community, uh, relieving the cost of doing laundry. We will have also other community partners there serving the community and just having a big grand party at the laundry mat. <laughs> And, but thank you for those, those simple things. We were talking about it yesterday, how much just two loads of laundry, how much that will take off of people because it's not just the, the laundry, it's all of the supplies you're gonna be gathering and the baskets. Um, and so thank you for everything that you're doing for the community and that you, you continue to think of new ways to help. And I'm looking forward to joining you on February 11th thank uh, you so much. with Laundry of, of Hope. Thank you so for much. Hope. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. As stated before, uh, when you just look at laundry, some of us don't even think about it. However, if that laundry is going to cost so much, and now the price of doing your own laundry is gone sky high also, that means that there might be the opportunity for somebody, if you do that and you can continue to help people, to have a better life. You know, it, it's, uh, we take so many things for granted. We think that the sun's always gonna come up, and it does, and that the moon's always gonna, and it does. But within that sun and that moon is Earth. And here's where it starts. <coughs> it's gotta get better, because it hopefully can't get any worse. You're helping people that are really in need, and I think you gave the address of 1613 East. Martin Luther, Luther King. King, that's one block east of 15th Street, am I correct? Yes. So that's a beautiful neighborhood. I remember when I was a kid, there was nothing there. And it's, it's a wonderful area. People there are always cordial, they always help each other out. And I'm going back to the 40s. That's my grandfather's day, not mine. But thank you for what you do because you're giving somebody one word, and that's hope. Yes. And without hope and without having a pathway forward, you're gonna fall off the cliff. And we certainly don't want that to happen to anyone. So thank you again for what you do and all the people that help you, congratulations. Thank you so much. Well deserving. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. So wait a minute, I was looking at the audience, I saw a guy in this audience. <laughs> And I looked on Facebook, is that your other half? You that forgot? That's my better. The other half? <laughs> and that was one of our, we went to school together. <laughs> to school together. So That's my I, husband. I, I see him helping you all the time, so we want to make sure he gets yes. recognized with yes. your program. Yeah, that's my so better we, half. So we thank you for what you do. All right? Congratulations, so all right?
Councilman, I know that on, on, the, on your agenda you have Mr. Joseph Johnson, uh, but uh, again, I want to go and recognize him here. He's been unable, he's been traveling, he has some new businesses, but I want to publicly recognize him for the work he did for our committee, our finance committee, and we're going to get, I'm going to present that to him off-site at a future date. No problem. Last one of the day, again, another organization. I, I, I want to make sure I got these organizations out of the way at the beginning of this year because they're doing so much work in our communities. And we have the, we see uh, your uh, group here. <coughs> we see you. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get it right. Come on up. I'm going to make it I get it right, huh? All right. We have George and Tanya. Tanya. Tanya Kimball. Kimball, right. Who have founded the We See You organization. <laughs> so I learned about this organization and throughout the community. And some of the people call me about it researched it, and I always like to get people to act up for what they're doing and community when helping people, especially at this time that we're going through. So at this particular time, we want to present the We See You, Inc., in recognition of the We See You, Inc., nonprofit organization founded by George and Tanya Kimball since 2010, We See You, Inc., through its mission, has played a critical role in aiding and inspiring hardworking individuals by supporting youth, individuals, and families with various physical, educational, and financial needs through community outreach initiatives throughout the year. We See You, Inc., founded formally in 2017, has over a decade of diligent community service geared towards community outreach, assisting hardworking moms, dads, and guardians in need of providing necessities and assisting college-bound seniors. Every year, We See You, Inc. serves over 1,000 youth annually. They recently held their 2022 Holiday Angel Initiative and gave over 270 gifts to children and youth throughout the Tampa Bay area. With a passion for those who serve, uh, they also hand write notes placed inside care packages for active duty military members. Their first, their first responders and teachers, We See You, Inc. is known for going above and beyond to be a resource for those truly in need. And this morning, we recognize your organization. We we'll present this combination on the 10th day of January, 2023. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, you all, you know, this is my first first award because I'm not one for recognition. I have a heart to serve. You know, God God gave me the spirit of giving and and um, the spirit of serving. And so I, I never liked to, the light to just shine on me because I know that it takes more than just myself. It takes a village. I truly believe that. I come from a family of educators, and unfortunately, my you know my mom and dad have passed on, but. They had the heart to, to serve and, and be a blessing to others and in the community. And I'm just thankful that God gave me that spirit as well, and I got that from them. And so I would like to bring up, because We See You was founded based on the experiences that, that you know, I went through uh, coming up and being a, a single mom. You know, there was always that gap, right, because I've always worked hard. I went to USF, graduated, came a single mom while... Go Bulls. <laughs> while, I was, while I was at USF, and there was always that gap where I made too much, right, to get assistance, but not enough to, you know, to, to really give those extra to, to my, my um, daughter at the time. And so when we found it, or when I first had the vision of We See You, it was to help those that are trying, right, in the community that are working hard and that during those special moments, whether it's, you know, going back to school, getting your kids ready to go back to school or the holidays, they just barely have enough to keep the lights on and, and, and keep things running. So We See You was founded on that. That's our vision. That's our mission to help those hardworking families that are trying to help themselves. And we like to do that by creating a platform for the community, the community to get on board, individuals, families, the business community, to create a platform to make it easy to give, to make it easy to serve. And so that's really the core of our organization. That's what we're about. We have community partners that um, come on board, 
uh, Children with a Vision, um, Dungy Family Foundation. Lauren, we partner on so many things and so many initiatives in the community. I'm thankful for our partnership, our friendship. My sister's here. Um, so I would like to bring them up after my husband says his, because without, without everyone and without you know, that village, it would not be possible. So I appreciate the recognition, um, but it really should be so many other people standing up here that you all could see that, you know, that is part of the We See You Village. And I didn't want to flood the court, you know, the room, so I, I didn't send an invite out to all of our, our village. But just know that there is a whole business community. I work full time for PricewaterhouseCoopers. And so they've come on board for the last five years. And you would not believe the impact that they've helped and they've had in the community through We See You. We do financial literacy in the schools. We're teaching um, technology. Uh, we're in 10 different schools that we're teaching financial literacy technology. We've done blind spots training to private schools over at Carroll Day School just for that diversity and inclusion so that you know those students know the diversity that exists. And so, and that was all through our partnership with PwC. So I'm just thankful for the, and I can go on and on, and I usually don't, because I usually don't say anything, believe it or not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm thankful for, for the, uh, the recognition and the opportunity to, to just let you all know about We See You. So. Well, thank you. And you got some good strong leaders, especially you have Ms. Dungey on board. So I know you got strong leadership <laughs> with the programs that her husband has with our young people, with our young men, so, and our dads. So we appreciate that. So I know it's a great organization. Yeah, oh yeah. Council? I want to give him an opportunity to oh, say a couple oh, of words. <laughs> to, to, be, be, to be brief, um, this award, this accommodation, like my wife just said, it goes to all those who support us because it's not about us. We never started this to gain attention to ourselves. The scripture teaches that what you do in secret for God, he will openly reward you for. This is a manifestation of that. So we, we thank you guys for that. We just want you to know that there's some folks working behind the scenes that don't always pop their head up to be seen that are really working hard as you do. And we embrace all the help, all the encouragement. This just encourage us, encourages us more to continue to do what we do. So thank you. Jim? Councilman Miranda, again, uh, it's a combination of everyone helping someone. Yeah even that someone is one person or many more. But to get together and do what you're doing, starting from scratch and wanting to help somebody, right there, it's a game forward that you're gonna be successful because it's the love of doing something to make somebody smile for just that brief period of time maybe, or to give somebody hope that they can change their life and be somebody that should be what they wanna be and they can't right now because of the situation they're in. God bless you for opening the door and making people walk through the hall so they could have something, a dream that they never thought they could achieve. But because of your organization and your, your people that are helping you, you have given them that opportunity. Thank you very much and keep on going. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Murtag. Um, what a wonderful day today, <laughs> full of community and love and support. And so thank you for all the work that you are doing. Um, it's amazing you talking about the partnerships that you you have been able to uh, create and to continue your mission but I particularly love the way you talked about how this came to you when you were a mother struggling to do just do a little bit extra and how you want to fill that gap it's a very specific gap mm -hmm. and it's it's one that we do overlook and so thank you for using your time and your talent and your treasure for focusing on um, a, a, a specifically overlooked community. Um, and thank you for, again, for all the work you do behind the scenes. Um, and we're really happy that we could uh, uh, honor you today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. You know, it's, you know, you reach out to, to people and you lift them up, you give them a hand up and you make this community a better place. So thank you for uh, this very well-deserved recognition because you're making a tremendous impact and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you very much for everything that you do. You know, one constant that we see with a lot of the organizations that Councilman Goose is honored today is, is faith. 
and, and faith in God and, and a sense of humility uh, before your creator. Um, I think there's a Bible verse that says, I think it's Psalms, unless if the Lord builds this house, those who build it labor in vain. Yes, sir. And it's very obvious that y'all's house is built by something much bigger than you guys. Yes. I'm glad y'all mentioned Carrollwood Day School. I, <laughs> I love that school. My my um, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife's a teacher there, and two, and my niece and my nephew, my bro two of my brother's three kids, go to Carrollwood Day School. That's an amazing school, a, a wonderful school. But thank you guys for all that you do in our community. It's very obvious that you have a heart for passion or a heart for serving and very passionate about that. So thank you guys, and God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Councilor Carlson. Yeah, thank you for all you do. Um, thanks to all your supporters. Thanks to P PwC, great company, <laughs> for supporting you and doing this. <laughs> Um, please keep us posted on everything that you're doing. Um, this may sound silly. He quoted the Bible. I'll, I'll quote something else. Have, I don't know if you all have seen the new um, Avatar movie, but has anybody seen it? The, all the kids now that have seen it, they're all going. The, one of the things they say is, I see you. And it is about deeply understanding the person or, or acknowledging them and, and, um, and understanding, being aware or present with what they're, what they're saying. And I'm a marketing guy. There's got to be some opportunity there. But with, I've heard, a, I have little kids, so I hear their friends, they're all talking about, I see you. And it's, it, maybe James Cameron copied your idea. But, I, I um, think he did. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but it, there, it's, it's a great concept, so thank you for doing it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for the things I know you're going to do in the future. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have to leave. I want to apologize to Mr. Cattu for his guest and to the Yabasco family, but I have to leave. Thank you very much. Council members, I, I too have an appointment that I was supposed to be at 11 o'clock, but I wanted to at least say something on this next matter. Uh, I was talking with uh, Mr. Urbanski yesterday, Mr. Mark Urbanski, talking about the process of this. Uh, I, I explained the things that are going to have to be done. There is now a committee on naming of streets, honorary naming of streets. Uh, and that there had to be a street designated for a naming of someone. Now, we all, most of us know Mr. Jim Urbanski, a longtime member of the Tampa Tribune. Uh, and uh, speaking with Mr. Mark Urbanski, his son, uh, we had come to a, some sort of conclusion that Parker Street, which is just south of Kennedy, in front of where the Tampa Tribune used to be might be an appropriate street yeah. so again i apologize i have to leave i just wanted to to throw that out uh to the verse and hopefully it will be accepted in this discussion thank you thanks mr Thinker. yes sir yes ma'am thank you thank you go ahead 
All right, do you have a presentation? Um, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me here. Um, my family has been in Tampa for 135 years. And my great grandfather was the first Greek here. I also went to the University of Tampa. And I was the first deaf person to graduate there. Because of all of this, I love Tampa. And I have a keen interest here. I've worked with the city before. I've worked with the city before. I actually did the closed captioning project and still here today after 25 years. Thank you. Thank you. I'm working on a new project. I'm working on a new project. Like you said, street naming to honor. Jim has done a lot for Tampa. If you put 5,000 people in one room, if you put 5,000 people in one room, you count how many hours? You count it how many hours? Community service. Of community service. Jim. Jim. Jim did way more. Did way more than that. It's not comparable. It's not comparable. No. And uh, it's the most honorable man I've ever met. He's the most honorable man I've ever met. Because time is short. Because time is short. And I have an email. And I wrote an email, and um, I'm going to take it from here. I am honored to speak on behalf of a fine gentleman that loved the city of Tampa as much as I do, James F. Urbanski. This legend is most deserving and certainly worthy of what is before us today, having a major street name in his honor. As this endeavor has been pursued, I met with Mayor Castor and worked closely with, for months with Osea Wynn, who is the administrator of the Neighborhood and Community Affairs with the city of Tampa. Osea was very helpful. She's a wonderful lady and a total asset to our city. Jim was a close personal friend of mine. Sadly, he passed away on April 16th, 21, at the age of 93. He lived most amazing life, and I remain close friends with his family. Jim was a very warm, bright, and giving man. He was one of the greatest people I've ever met and had the pleasure of knowing. Jim contributed greatly throughout his civic duties to help shape the city of Tampa into the great city it is today. In 1993, a newspaper editorial praised Jim Urbanski as the most selfless and efficient civic leader in Tampa's history, also calling him a healer, diplomat, and motivator. I agree with this statement wholeheartedly. Jim was a member of a small care, uh, cadre of gentlemen that would meet with the NFL commissioner, Pete Rozelle, and the 24 NFL team owners starting in 1970, pitching them on an award and awarding Tampa an NFL franchise. In 1974, they were successful with their efforts, and the league awarded Tampa with the NFL franchise, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks' first season was in 1976. The effect this had on the city of Tampa was tremendous and put Tampa in the national spotlight for dramatic growth and, not to mention, the economic impact of the NFL franchise had on the city. According to a December 21 report by Pinellas County, uh, while it is hard to precisely pinpoint an economic implant, uh, impact the Bucks provide to the Tampa Bay area, it is likely above a hundred million annually. In order for a city to host a Super Bowl, the city has to be home to the NFL franchise. Jim and the affirmated Super Bowl task force was able to successfully land Tampa our first Super Bowl in 1984, making Tampa the smallest city ever to host a Super Bowl. Jim, acting as vice chair of the Super Bowl task force, did it again in 1991. Tampa has now hosted a total of five Super Bowls, and uh, he was a true modern-day pioneer. Considering Tampa did not have to construct any new venues to host the championship events, it is almost certain that the city came out ahead. For reference, the 2020 Super Bowl host committee stated the game generated an economic impact of $571.9 million. Jim and the group were not done yet. In 1984, Jim and his colleagues were able to land the NCAA Football Hall of Fame, later known as the Outback Bowl, from Birmingham, Alabama to the city of Tampa. The permanent impact of this on the city of Tampa has also been tremendous. Since its inception, more than $1 billion has been granted and generated positively impacting our town and the economics. Jim also chaired or served on dozens of boards of charitable organizations, museums, the Stras Forming per, uh, Performing Arts Center, and he is, and on and on. And then in 1989, he was named the Civilian of the, war, uh, the Year. 
In closing, Jim dramatically helped shape the city of Tampa into the great city it is today. Due to his love to his city and the passion to make it great, America's next great city, his slogan that's helped me approve. I, pur uh, I propose the city of Tampa to have a major street named after a true Tampa legend, James F. Urbanski. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, what's it after? Back to back. Thank you very much, DC. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Members of Council, I'm Ron Weaver. Um, I rise on the occasion of a gentleman who is very much like the heroes of this morning. Many of these heroes this morning reflected upon what was just said by Jessica with respect to the fact that Jim Urbanski was a healer and he was a motivator and he was a diplomat. The sports world saw this magnificent new Buccaneers team and thousands of people got jobs because of it in hotels. But quite frankly, 90% of Jim Urbanski was not just the Super Bowl and the team and all the magnificent things that attended. 90% of Jim Urbanski's heart came from an orphanage in Bloomington, Illinois, where he was there alone, and a couple named Urbanski came to get a little girl, and they saw this cute little boy. They took home the little girl and little James Urbanski, who was given a birthday by a, a nun who gave him St. Francis's feast day as his birthday, October 4th. This young man in this orphanage went to journalism school and came to Tampa, Florida, and he was a journalist for a while, and then he became the ultimate motivator and healer and initiator of so many dozen causes. The Bucks are but one, and in my mind, maybe the least of all the hundred things that he did for all those like those kids in that orphanage in Bloomington, Illinois, where Jim Urbanski came to Tampa, ran the Tampa Tribune for 31 years, and showed Tampa what a real healer and motivator and inspirer could do if he simply had the heart of a little boy, watching a couple come in for a little girl and seeing him and taking him home where he has changed Tampa in ways that will never be comprehensible. And if you have an opportunity to name even a little street or a big street after anybody, I humbly take you back to a Bloomington, Illinois orphanage and a young man named Jim Urbanski who fortunately came to Tampa to be our healer and our motivator and our inspiration. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. There's no public comment. These are ceremonial activities. Councilman Goose. So are we looking to make a motion to name the street now or what are we doing, sir? We, there's a committee now. Or we Just would have to wait until yeah. maybe the, the regular meeting? Right. Yeah. Right, okay. okay, so we would, we would wait until the next regular meeting, which is going to be the 19th? I believe it's so it's right around the corner we'll have a full council and then we, we can make a motion there what we would do is we recommend it to the right. street naming committee right and uh, councilman or chairman Citro had mentioned Parker Street and I know exactly it's right here on the other side of the uh, the bridge right. that would connect Tampa Tribune um, the old Tampa Tribune site uh, so so that's it we would wait until the next regular meeting and then we can make a motion there to make the recommendation right. to the committee so thank you um in my opinion i think it's very well deserved i don't think if it was for uh, urbanski mr urbanski that the buccaneers would even be here who knows i mean he was instrumental going back over 50 years and uh and that's just one of the many things that he was known to do i mean that's a name her you know growing up it's a name that i would hear all the time and i remember he passed away recently but you know a pillar in this community and, and everything that he'd done that he had done. So thank you very much. Anybody else? No? Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Gatufus, I'll be in touch with you. I'll uh, uh, contact you and let you know uh, next meeting. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank All right. You. Motion to okay. receive I'd like to thank you. Huh? I'd like to thank you. Thank you for emailing me. Thank you for emailing me. Thanks for emailing me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll get in contact with you. So thank you. Motion to receive the call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.